How's everybody doing? You want to know how I'm doing? Nobody asked. Great. Thank you. This is a little annoying, Jerry. Right, we got to have it, though. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, second row left, Lori. Hi, Lori. Hi, Coach. How are you doing? Awesome. Thank you. Um, when you have as many departures as you had, yeah. do you ever put more emphasis on current polish than future potential in recruiting more so than you otherwise would? I don't, I, you know, I think we're looking for guys that can play right away all the time. Um, I think that's a great question, uh, but I think when you're at Ohio State, you're looking for the best players in the country, and you would think the best players in the country would have the opportunity to play early. And so I, I don't think there was a greater emphasis on that, but, uh, you know, I think we found some guys that are going to be able to contribute right away, so we're excited about that. Don't you ever find a kid at a high school who's just not set up to provide that kid with the basis to make him a college-ready player? Uh, I think you, I don't know that you always know that in advance. I would have told you, you'd take a kid like Eli Apple, who was a five-star recruit and an Army All-American, and then he didn't play his first year because he was awful. And, and two years, three years later, he's, you know, he's going to be a first or second round draft pick. So everybody develops at different rates. Uh, some kids are going to go to work tomorrow uh, on preparing for June the 12th and August the whatever, uh, and some kids aren't. And so the kids that are going to go to work out of this class are going to have every opportunity to be on the field in the fall. Uh, front row right here, Austin. Hi, Austin. Hey, Terry. Uh, Urban mentioned the secondary is first and foremost the position that's got to be addressed moving now forward. Sure. Uh, this may not be possible for you, but does that give you more energy? I mean, more urgency? <laughs> to well, I think you know we. I think we're urgent about everything we do. We we lost three really good players. And they were all underclassmen. And when that happens, you, you, you have to understand that you're going to replace them with young players. You know, we had a great workout this morning, and I got to see an awful lot of really good young players running around that field. So I'm not one bit discouraged. Uh, is there urgency? Sure, because there, there are more holes to fill than there were last year at this time. At the same time, it, it's very similar to the situation we found ourselves in in 2014. And we're replacing some guys, and, and you know what? Guys stepped up and played and had great off seasons and were prepared to go. And I think that's what's going to happen with this group. So I don't know that we're any more. We're always urgent. And uh, I think we're always passionate about what we do. So I think we're going to be OK. Uh, middle, Ryan, you spend a lot of time in Hi, Michigan. Ryan. Hey, <laughs> you spend a lot of time in Michigan. Uh, whenever a new you just staff stayed up north, Ryan, that'll cost you 10 push ups later. <laughs> when a new staff comes in, do you spend time trying to see what they're doing and how that might impact you and your efforts in the state down the road and has it at all? Well, sure. Anytime you're recruiting against people, which is what we do, right? And especially when you go into another state to recruit against people, you're going to have to evaluate how they do their business. And the guys that have been at uh, the green team have done things a certain way. And now those guys at the, at the team up north have changed some of their habits. Although I would tell you that the previous staff, those were good recruiters. And so we, uh, you have to battle in different ways. Uh, but the main thing for us is not to really concern ourselves as much with our opponents as with the kids that we're recruiting and what we have to sell. When you have a great product like we have, I don't think it matters as much the style or substance of how somebody else is recruiting. And with both of those teams you know, looking like they're trending upwards, do you pick your spots anymore, or is, is there any? Well, I think one of them only took two kids out of the state, to be honest with you. So I don't know what the numbers are. Uh, I know that we're going to go in there and we're going to recruit the very best players in that state, and we're going to come out with some of them every year. And uh, we're, we're, we're confident in that. It's not very far away. And uh, we've done very well there, and we're going to continue to do very well there. Front row middle, Dave. Hi, Terry. Hi, Dave. Urban said that Denzel Ward has the inside track to be uh, the, uh, the starting corner opposite Gary Unconley said on his radio show earlier today. I know, okay. I know Denzel Ward has a lot of speed. What else does he bring to the table that you think could enable him to win that job? Well, I think his speed is his, his greatest attribute. I think he's gotten a lot stronger uh, already, which we're encouraged by. I think he played well in special teams in some pretty critical situations. He was on all four running teams last year, so he got on the field experience. Not enough corner experience. Uh, I know there's some other guys in that room that aren't going to allow that uh, to be a passage that that's going to go uncontested. And so there's going to be a lot of great competition there. But uh, I, I, we're excited about Denzel. You know, we really are. Is there a chance a corner? 
could move to safety either this spring or fall without naming a name. Is there a chance one of your guys could move to safety? I think what you would I think what you should expect from the Buckeyes is this in the back end of our defense. We are really playing a lot of corners. You know, those positions, the position that Von Bell played last year, while traditional football guys would call that a safety position, I'm gonna tell you right now that's a corner position. It happens to be an off corner and happens to be a little bit more in the middle of the field, but that takes corner skill and technique to do what Von Bell did. And those of you guys who know Von Bell, Von Bell could play a uh, corner in the NFL next year. Uh, he has that skill set. So those positions and, and the way we play our defense right now, particularly the, the, the nickel, which I would call the slot corner, the two outside guys, and that, that, inside, that field safety position are really corner job descriptions. And so you're going to see a lot of corners on the field in the fall. Hi, Bill. Marshawn Lattimore is. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure right now you had higher hopes for what he could be doing, and he's been held back by injuries, obviously. Just how is he coming along? Is there any concern on your part that his body maybe won't just allow him to sort of reach that potential that everyone thought he had? I would say that concern, sure, because he hasn't been able to do it. When he has been healthy and been able to play, he is a fantastic player. Uh, our job is to get him healthy consistently. And Coach Marotti, I, I couldn't have more faith in anybody in the world than Coach Marotti. And he's done an intensive study uh, of Marshawn and his body and, and has had him tested on a number of different levels and planes and has rearranged some equipment in the weight room and some uh, workouts uh, to help with his particular uh, injury issues. So far, the progress is fantastic. Very excited to see what he's going to be able to do in the spring and uh, looking very forward to Marshawn being a huge contributor for us in the fall. And when a guy deals with something like that, how do you as his position coach maybe try to help him balance the I mean, I think you just like you would with your son. You're going to hug him. You're going to love him. You're going to encourage him. Uh, it's easy to get discouraged. When you're a high-end athlete, and you're not able to, to work at your craft, I think it's very easy to get discouraged. And to keep players like that engaged and a part of the team is a very challenging thing. And, and it, I try to treat him like I would want my son treated. And he's, we're in, he's included in everything. And right now, he's, you know, he, he's preparing himself to play. And I'm excited about that. Front row right, Bill. Hello, Kerry. Hi, Bill. Today's the day where they sign on the dotted line. The yeah. Greatest, greatest moment of their life tomorrow. They become the guy at the bottom of the total ball. Why is that? Because first of all, they have lost their leverage. They're here. Okay. You got them. Well, I don't get the, you get to put them at the bottom, but that's okay. Yeah. Well, but they start from scratch. Sure. That de-recruitment, if you want to call it that, how important is that process? What's the challenge of, of handling that for kids? I think the immediate challenge with every kid that signed today is, and we've done this. I think you know, Coach Meyer. The minute a player commits changes from recruitment phase to preparation phase. And that is what every one of those kids is in now. Some of them have been in it longer than others, obviously the seven that are on campus, but in other kids like Jake Hausman, who's been committed for a long time, has been working towards that for an extended period of time. Now the rules allow us to probably give them more information and things like that workout wise that, that we, than we would have otherwise been able to do. And so the path for those kids will be very clear and very set. And hopefully uh, as many of them as can will be around in spring ball, be around uh, you know, and be, be working toward June the 12th because the rules are a little bit different. We get to do a little bit more with them in the summer. Uh, but the kid who really wants to focus on getting ready to play for Ohio State in the fall is going to have every opportunity to do that. And that, that's our job to get them ready. And we spent a lot of time in conversation about that. Have you found that certain kids have a hard time with that adjustment of you go from we need you, we need you, we need you to, again, you, know, you, you have to start from scratch? I don't think the elite athlete does. I think that kid already understands. And, and they've been working at a really high level already. Uh, I think the hardest thing for them to understand is the, the the transition of uh, time commitment and the fact that everybody on the field is, is literally on the same plane with them. And so the, the differences between player A and, play and player B are, are razor thin, and they've got to find their edge to find their way on the field. Second row left, Ari. Hey, Ari. How are you doing? Um, Chose blue today. <laughs> I didn't even think about yeah. it. Sorry about that. It's OK. Um, <laughs> speaking of blue, uh, you're the uh, one of the lead guys in Michigan, like Ryan said, and um, you, you spent a lot of time there, you know, yep. Cash Tech, and doing a lot of things with their top players. 
And I know that you said you don't want to spend too much time wondering about what other people in that state might be doing from a recruiting strategy. Sure. But the unorthodox approach that Jim Harbaugh's <coughs> taking has had to have some sort of impact on some of the guys you're recruiting. A, do you have an opinion about the way that he's gone about doing things? And B, have you had to change anything that you do, or has it impacted you in any way based on the way that they're approaching things? A, no. B, no. Uh, and, and I can expand on that if you like, but the reality is I haven't felt uh, any impact uh, on the kids that I recruit. Uh, everybody's got their own styles and their own uh, methodologies, and uh, Coach Myers is very, very clear and uh, I think fantastic. And um, so our approach to the recruitment of players in uh, Ohio and, and all the surrounding states is probably going to stay the same because it works, it works for us. It's who we are. And uh, I haven't noticed among the kids that I recruit uh, any change or difference or expectation on their part that we would somehow become something different than the Ohio State Buckeyes. Far right over here, uh, far right over here, Chaba. Chaba, how are you? Not too bad, Coach. How are you? Fantastic. So if I read this correctly today, uh, 17 of 25 commits didn't take another visit after November. That's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. Doesn't that speak to the character of the kids that we're recruiting? I mean, when you think about when you, uh, everybody, when there's a new category across the bottom of the screen, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it says flips, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And we've got these kids of such quality that when somebody else is pulling at them and knocking on their door and all those kind of things, they say, no, I'm good. I'm good. That's, 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 to me, that's remarkable. And, and probably that has been understated. But I, I haven't been in here, so anyway. The flip side of that, everything going smoothly. Today, I understand there was an issue with the fax, where there was a kid from Florida trying to get in. You know, the fax machine wasn't working right. I mean, of all days for it to go wrong, I mean, one. But going off of that as well, have you had any other kind of recruiting day snafus, if you will, something like that happening, just completely out of the blue, where you're, you're just tearing your hair out? You know, Never since I've been here, there have been years when snow has created issues for guys and trying to figure out. Uh, you know, how they're going to get their information back, but times have changed with email and being able to take pictures of things, and the rules are different, so we haven't run into a, a whole lot of that kind of stuff uh, lately. Uh, you know, a few years ago, I lost a kid on signing day, couldn't find him, you know, things like that. That's always a little disconcerting uh, when you're expecting paper and paper doesn't come, but nothing today. Today, I didn't know our fax was broke. Our, our fax was broke, Mark? Out of paper. Was that? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, use the facts. How do you get the la uh, last question uh, every time? Yeah. Kind of longevity. Is that a tradition thing? Yeah, no. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, forgot what I was going to ask. Slow hands. I'm good at that. Who of these guys coming in is Jordan? Who jumps out at you that you think you can throw out there immediately and compete? And, and, and I know this is probably you're going to you're going to call bull crap on it, but the reality is all of them. I mean, you know, Wayne Davis had seven interceptions. And he returned six of them for touchdowns. You know, he's Gatorade Player of the Year in, in the state of Virginia. Jordan Fuller's Gatorade Player of the Year in the state of Jersey. And, and Rajay Burns was a finalist for Mr. Football in the state of Kentucky. And, you know, Kareem Felder had a, had a, had a, a fantastic career. And Jocelyn Wint. I mean, th these are guys that can play. So uh, we have opportunity. That, that's probably the most unusual thing about Ohio State right now. We have opportunity for those young guys to come in here and make their mark. So I, I, I don't know that anyone is more prepared. We'll find out over the next four or five months. Are you all immediately looking at Fuller as a corner? Or yes. Be, okay. and, and Big, long corner from Jersey. Yeah. It sound familiar. Yeah. 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 And last thing, you know, like you said, you've been doing it a while. What is the biggest change just in recruiting in your mind as you look back on the last 10 years that's occurred or the last eight years that's occurred just in pursuit of players? What well, is, it's, what's the toughest challenge that's developed, I guess? I, th I think the influx of information, both true and false, uh, social media, uh, opportunity for players to uh, know the other players that are being recruited and that, that all of the communication that, that goes not just from school to player but player to player is revolutionary. I think the attention uh, being spent uh, on this has its positive sides because it puts college football at the forefront of America's thoughts, which I think is wonderful, and it has its negative sides because I think it has a tendency to uh, create uh, some things in kids' minds that probably don't exist. Uh, I don't think that, that any of that can be controlled. I think it's going to continue to grow and get bigger and bigger, and I think those of us that can 
figure out how to use and manage that to properly give the right information to kids are going to be successful and the other guys are going to struggle with it. One last thing. I know I said that, but Michael Jordan, once you got his commitment, yeah. how tough was it to hold on to? And number two, do you still even sort of like – Notice, hey, this guy's from Cincinnati originally. This, you know, what I mean, do you, do you, how deep do you look into the backgrounds and know the guys that you can really go after in a in another state? You know, where the the two major places are coming after him just as strong. And stuff. Oh, absolutely. I think all of that stuff helps you. I mean, he's got family in Louisville. He's got family in Columbus. He's got, you know, a, a, he played little league football down there where where I know a lot of folks in in Cincinnati, and so. All of that is helpful. Any connection that you have with a player and his family is going to pay long-term benefits in the recruitment process. We don't recruit anybody in a week anymore. I mean, you know, it's two years, it's three years, and, and all of those uh, different avenues are generally positive if, if people that you've come in contact with have had positive experiences with you. And um, I think for a kid like Michael Jordan, that was a big factor in his decision to become a Buckeye. He already had a great affection for you know, the state of Ohio and, and for Ohio State.